Hey guys, welcome back. I'm so glad to be with you again today. Today we're going to jump right in because we are actually going to cover two stories today. So you remember a couple of weeks ago I explained to you that sometimes we have to skip a couple of the stories that are in our amazing book so that we can finish the whole Old Testament in one year. Well, one of the ones that we have to skip explains today's story. So I'm going to read you a little bit of that one and then summarize the rest of it and then we'll go on to today's. So we're going to be learning about the prophet Elijah. So you remember that um, in our last story, the kingdom was divided, right? So the 10 northern tribes and the two southern tribes. So we will jump right into this one. So I'll read you part of this. This is God provides for Elijah in miraculous ways. The kingdom of Israel remained divided after God took the 10 tribes away from Solomon's son. These northern tribes kept the name Israel that God had given Jacob, but they did not follow the Lord. The tribe of Judah lived in Jerusalem along with the priests of Levi, who cared for the temple. They were called the people of Judah. And after a while, a sinful man named Ahab became Israel's king. Can you guys say Ahab? Good job. He married a sinful woman named Jezebel, and they served a false god who wasn't even a god named Baal, and they even built a house for Baal. Because Ahab was so wicked, the Lord sent a prophet named Elijah to deliver this message from the Lord. From now on, there would be no more rain or even dew in the morning on the grass in Israel unless the Lord spoke through Elijah. Without the rain, there would be no water to help fill the streams and no water for crops to grow or for animals and people to drink. Then the Lord sent Elijah away. He said, depart, so go from here, and go hide yourself by the brook named Sherith. You shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Whoa! With Elijah gone, Ahab could not call on the Lord for help when the rain stopped. All he had were his false idols. He would discover soon that Baal could not help him. When the drought began, God kept his promise to Elijah. Elijah drank from the waters of the brook and was fed bread and meat carried by ravens each day. That is super cool. So you can see that on our picture here. Do you remember what are the ravens bringing to Elijah? Food, right? It's bread and meat. Now, how do they know he's hungry? How do they know they need to bring him food? Do you remember who told them? That's right, it's God. And it says, who is really providing the food for Elijah? So who is really feeding him? Is it the ravens? No, it's God. That's right. So the rest of the story tells us that one day there wasn't any more water left, so God sent him to go find a widow. That means a woman whose husband has died. And he went to this town where God told him to go, and there was a widow. And so he said, can you please give me some bread and some water to drink? But she said, I don't have any bread. All I have is a tiny, tiny little bit of flour and a tiny, tiny little bit of oil. And I'm going to go home and I'm going to put that together and make a tiny little bit of bread. And my son and I will eat that. And then we won't have any more food left. So we're going to die. But Elijah said, don't fear. Do what you said you're going to do. But make a tiny little cake and bring it to me first. And then you make the rest for, your, for you and your son. And God has said that that little tiny bit of flour and that little tiny bit of oil will not run out until God sends rain again because then she would be able to get food again because the drought would be over. And so the, the, widow, did, the, sorry, the widow did that, <laughs> she obeyed Elijah, and the Lord provided. He did exactly what Elijah said he would do. And the flour did not run out and the oil did not run out. So a really bad thing happened. One day the widow's son died and she was so distraught. And so Elijah asked the Lord to raise her son from the dead. And the Lord heard Elijah's prayers and he brought him back to life. So the widow knew that he was truly a man of God then. And one more amazing thing about this story is that woman was not an Israelite. She was not one of God's chosen people of that race of people that he was directing and pouring into. But God still cared for her. Now, that leads into today's story. So this is Elijah and the prophets of Baal. This is a fun story. It says the long drought created a terrible famine in Israel. And that means there was no food. In the days of King Ahab, 
But the prophet Elijah, the one man who could ask the Lord to bring rain, was nowhere to be found. Can you guys look for him? Where is he? Where is he? He's nowhere to be found. God had hidden him. So Jezebel, remember that's Ahab's wicked wife, had captured all of the prophets of the Lord that she could find and killed them. But she didn't find them all because a servant of the king named Obadiah saved 100 of those faithful servants by hiding them in a cave. You guys pretend like you're hiding in a cave? You're hiding, you're hiding, you're hiding. Nobody's going to find you because one of the faithful servants saved you and hid you in a cave. Now, after Elijah spent many days at the widow's home from our last story, God told him to return to Ahab and to send to say him to say to him <laughs> that the Lord was about to send rain. So Elijah left the widow and started back to Israel. Along the way, he met Obadiah and told him to go and tell the king he was returning. When Ahab heard the news, he came out to meet Elijah and he said, Is that you, you troubler of Israel? And Elijah said, I have not troubled Israel, but you have, because you abandoned the Lord and followed Baal. Elijah told Ahab to get all the people of Israel and to bring all of the false god Baal's prophets. There was another false god too, Asherah, to bring all of those prophets from those false gods and meet him at Mount Carmel. So the king gathered all of his prophets at Mount Carmel. Elijah challenged them to a contest right in the middle of a famine and a drought, and he's challenging them to a contest. He says, bring two bulls for sacrifices, one for me and one for you. Gather two piles of wood and lay one bull on each pile. Then you, prophets of Baal, can call out to your God to send down fire to burn up the sacrifice. Because if he's a true God, then he will, right? I will call on the name of the Lord. So whichever God answers by sending fire is surely the true God. The prophets and the people agreed. When the bulls arrived, Elijah told the prophets of Baal, but you guys can go first. They prepared their sacrifice and their altar, and they called on Baal all day long. But, of course, Baal didn't answer. Elijah even made fun of them. He said, maybe your God is sleeping. Maybe he's on vacation. Maybe he's going to the bathroom. The prophets yelled louder, and they even hurt themselves, thinking that might get Baal to answer. But still, Baal did not answer. Then it was Elijah's turn. So he repaired an old altar of the Lord that had 12 stones, representing the 12 tribes of Israel. You remember that when we counted up to 12? He dug a trench around it, and he placed the wood and the bull on top. And then Elijah had four jars filled with water and poured on top of the altar. Three times he had all of those jars poured over the offering, so that even the water filled the trench that he dug around it. The wood and the sacrifice were dripping wet, making them difficult to set on fire. Have you guys ever tried to make a fire and your wood's too wet and it just wouldn't burn? And he's doing it on purpose. Then Elijah prayed, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God of Israel. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God and that you have turned their hearts back. While Elijah was praying, the Lord sent fire from heaven. It burned up the wood and the bull and even the water in the trench and the whole altar that was made of stone. When the people saw it, they cried out, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Elijah told the people to capture the false prophets and kill them. Only then did the Lord give Israel rain. God rescued the people of Israel from their idolatry, that means worshiping idols, by showing them that he alone was the one true and powerful God. The prophets of Baal were destroyed, but God showed mercy to his people despite their sin. Each time we see God rescue sinful Israel in the Old Testament, it points the way, it points to the way that God rescues sinners through the death and resurrection of Christ. Jesus' death and his crucifixion and his resurrection are the greatest demonstration of God's power and mercy. And through them, God draws us away from the idols in our lives as well. So, who can remember, who can tell me, who was Elijah? He was a prophet of God, right? Now, what does a prophet do? He 
speaks for God. Remember, only speaks the word that God has him say. Now, who is Baal? We can't even really say who, right? He's not a person. He's not a god. He was a false god, an idol that those people followed because they thought that he was a god and controlled things, but he wasn't even real. Now, a false god can't do anything, right? So how about this? Can Baal see? <laughs> no. Can you guys cover up your eyes and say, no, Baal can't see. What do you think? Can Baal hear prayers? Cover up your ears. No, Baal can't hear prayers. Can he speak to people to comfort them? Cover up your mouth. No, he can't. And can Baal save the people? No, he can't. Now, can our God see? <laughs> yes. Can our God hear prayers? Yes. Can our God speak to us to comfort us? Yes. And can he save us? Yes. <laughs> so, one more question. What does water do to fires? We mentioned this briefly, right? It puts fires out. That's what firefighters use. When there's a big fire, they come and they spray their water all over it to put the fire out. So, why did Elijah have water poured all over the altar and all over the sacrifice? What do you think? He wanted to make sure that God gets the glory. Only God can consume wet wood and stones with fire. The prophets of Baal couldn't do that. And he completely got rid of all ideas that he might have tricked them somehow, like had a fire going underneath that he, you know, stoked a little bit and then had it blaze up. He soaked everything with water so that nobody could say that he tricked them, so that all the glory went to God. Our God is pretty amazing, isn't he? All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for saving us. Thank you that we can call out to you. Thank you that you are always with us. We're so thankful for this story, Lord, of Elijah in the Bible and the faithful prophet that he was and how he helps us see that you are the one true God. We love you so much, Jesus. Help us have a wonderful week with our families this week. In your name, amen. All right, well, as some of you are getting ready to start school, or maybe you did already, I want you to know that I'm praying for you. And I miss you guys, and I hope to see you soon. And even if you're not going to school, if you're staying home, or if you're doing school at home, I'm praying for you, and I hope you have a wonderful week this week. Bye-bye.